Okay, so I'm going to do a quick run through of a tutorial I used to have on my website. It was a text and an HTML document with, you know, images. It's about creating braided lines within 3ds Max and Photoshop. So uh, rather than do it the old school way, we're going to do a video. So let's get started in Photoshop. I'm going to make a new document, um, 800 by 600. Okay, I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm assuming you know how to use basic functions in Photoshop. We're going to go to the paint bucket and uh, usually by default it's set to foreground color. We're going to set it to pattern and from the pattern dropout we'll select herringbone 2. If you hover you'll see herringbone 2 is listed. Click on that and I'm going to come out here and fill the document with the herringbone 2. Um, it's not bad as it is but I, I think the scale is a little off so I'm going to go to the rectangular marquee. I'm going to control A to select all and then I'm going to go to right click, free transform. I'm going to change the width and the height scale to 200%. So 200, tab 200. And it's a little jaggy, but when you say OK uh, to the function, it'll clear up, which it did. And that's almost done. You can see this is a pattern that would lend itself nicely to a braided line. Um, the only problem is the white areas on a bump map usually come up and the black areas recess. So we want the opposite of what we're seeing. So I'm going to just control and I to invert that. That's perfect. I'm going to control shift and E to make the document one layer. And now I'm going to save this. Uh, here we go. Save. I'm going to call it new underscore braid dash 01 as a JPEG and keep the setting. I would, it's probably going to be a 10. I would put it up to the highest setting just for the purposes of the tutorial. And, and in general, it's good to use a high quality image. So, okay. And now we're going to close that image and I'm going to get rid of Photoshop. And here we have 3ds Max 2012 running. Um, I have V-Ray installed. I use V-Ray 2.0 for work a lot. So I do have it. And um, I have a basic scene, a, a ground plane and HDR, nothing fancy just so at the end of the tutorial I can show you a render. Um, and now what we're going to do is, I'm going to hit G for grid and F3. Okay, I'm going to just lay out a quick uh, spline. So I'm going to go to Create Panel and not Geometry. We're going to go to Shapes and I'm going to click on Line. And let me uncheck a few of these. I did a quick run through to make sure this would work for you guys. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is just make a quick line uh, that will be our braided line. So I'm just going to click around here. There we go. That looks good. And let me hit G to get rid of the grid. Now what we're going to do is just grab some verts. I'm going to grab these four middle verts. And I'm going to just go in here and fillet them. Just to give them a little curve. And there we go. Perfect. You can see it's a little wonky. I'm working with one hand because I have a hand like a a bullet mic and I need to hold it close to get the audio good. So this would be straighter, but I couldn't constrain. You hold shift to constrain your lines as you create. So, uh, well, there you have it. Um, now what we're going to do is enable and render. This is making this spline renderable in the render and we're going to enable it in the viewport. And you can see that it's got thicker. Um, it's not thick enough. What I want to do is scale this till it looks like I want it to. And right there it does. Let's go to perspective viewport. Pan around and F3 and I'm going to move it up off the ground plane a little just so you can see it just like that and the other thing is if you have a very curvy spline you have interpolation steps I'm going to set them to 12 and it'll clean up the corners a little bit but um, if you have a curvier spline you can play with that value and get a cre cleaner result so uh, it's not terribly important the other thing is, you can see my thickness is set pretty thick. This is a, a pretty big scaled hose. Um, I'm a big advocate of modeling to proper scale, but uh, for the purpose of the tutorial, I'm just trying to quickly show you this, how things work. So um, this is a huge piece, and we wouldn't do that realistically. Maybe we would, but uh, I can't think of an application. Anyway, um, M for Material Editor. And you can see I have an HDR down here for the environment. And then I have a V-Ray material. I'm going to make a new one just to be sure that we have a clean slate going. Let me bring this up. I'm using the compact material editor. You can use the slate as well. Okay, so now we have a V-Ray material. I'm going to go down to Maps. I'm going to go down to Bump. And I'm going to pick a bitmap. 
uh, right there. And I'm going to point to the bitmap we created, which is tutorial braid 2. Okay. And now I'm going to apply this material to the spline. It's still selected. I'm going to apply it. And you can see it turned gray, but we want to see the map in the viewport, which is really helpful for adjusting. So come over here, show standard map and viewport. I'm going to click that, and you can see, let me turn F4 so you see no wireframe. The map is now on there, but it's a little stretched, so we're going to just adjust the tiling. So as I adjust the tile values, it's going to update in the viewport interactively, so that's really helpful. So let's do this. There we go. All right. And then I'm going to just do it like that. And the good thing is this is, you know, it's up to you what looks good and it's uh, it's really it's easy to see what's going on so there we go we have it you can change the blur value if you like I think for the bump map I want to leave that blur value at one you can go to a lower like 0.5 or, or lower and you can also change the filtering type if needed but I think we're okay with the way it is so what I'm gonna do now is go up I'm gonna leave this bump value at 30 and I'm gonna right click on this I'm gonna copy this map and I'm going to go up here. I'm going to make this to a Chrome material so we can see like the result of the, the actual tutorial. I'm going to make the diffuse black and say OK. I'm going to make the reflect near white. I'm going to uncheck highlight glossiness in V-Ray. Um, I'm going to do this for V-Ray. I'm going to just set the IOR to 12. And then what I'm going to do is raise the subdivisions. OK, and the depth to eight just to show you guys and in the reflect slot we have that box I'm going to paste this map as an instance and what that does is uh, the black and white map we're using for a bump now will create uh, control the reflection so the white areas will be chrome and the black areas will not reflect so they'll give a little more depth to this so we can close material editor and I'm going to just really quickly render this out so I'm going to go to rendering I have the rendering set up um, basic V-Ray stuff and you can see here it uh, had one there that I didn't realize was there, but that's okay. And you see the, the, the braided line looks pretty good, I think. You know, you have some bump to it. Um, you have control of the reflection. And it's, it's pretty accurate to what you see with braided lines. You can go more detailed and create maps from, from scratch rather than using the herringbone. But it's a quick way if you had a deadline and you're working in a studio. You can do this in, what, 10 minutes we took to do this whole thing? and you have a nice looking result. So there you have it, a braided line using Photoshop and 3ds Max. I hope this was informative and uh, I hope to bring you more video tutorials in the near future. And uh, please visit my site uh, www.toddaniele.com that's T-O-D-D-D-A-N-I-E-L-E.com. -E Thanks.